Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Techno Universe. In today's video, we will discuss about the security controls that are used to protect the information, information processing facilities and information systems. Also, we will understand these controls with easy examples which can be correlated with our day-to-day -day operations. So stay tuned till the end of this video to understand the various information security controls and how it is implemented and monitored. But before we start this video, if you are visiting my channel for the first time, then please like, share and subscribe. So let's begin today's video. Now before we start our journey, let's understand the various types of security controls categorized at different levels. So as you can see the security controls are divided into three different areas like physical security control, operational security control or technical security control and administrative security control. Now we will get into the details of each of these controls and try to understand how these controls functions differently. Physical security or physical control. As we can understand with the name, it stands about physical security, which means this control is applicable to protect the information systems and information processing facilities from any harm or malicious attack. So now we understood that the physical security controls are meant to prevent unauthorized access to the information systems or information processing facilities. This control falls under preventive or detective controls criteria. But wait. What are we talking about preventive or detective controls? What does it mean? So let's wait some more time to get the understanding of these controls. We will discuss more about preventive and detective controls in the later part of this video. Now, how do I know which controls are examples of physical security controls? So the examples are security guards, CCTV cameras, cable protection, laptop locks, access badges, alarms, wall fencing and many others. The next control is operational or technical controls. These controls are more related with your hardware or software mechanism which is used to manage and protect the information and information systems. As the name reflects, these controls are designed, configured, implemented and monitored at technology level and that's where you see it is called as technical controls. Now the example of operational or technical, technical controls are encryption, access control list, protocols, firewalls, routers, IDS and IPS systems, and authentication methods like username and passwords, biometrics, smart cards, etc. And the last control is called administrative control. Administrative controls are more related to your organization's policies, procedures, and processes defined at enterprise level. Also, it is not only limited to your organization's policies, procedures, and processes but also includes regulatory and statutory requirements. As these controls are more around documented policies or procedures, it is also called as management controls, where the designated authority provides or directs the applicable controls. These controls are more focused towards people and process. Now the examples of administrative controls, which we have discussed earlier are policies, procedures, hiring practices in the organizations, background checks, information classification and labeling, information security awareness, various reports and review mechanism, people and process management, etc. Now we have understood what is physical security control, operational control and administrative controls. Now we will understand about what are the other types of controls that exist to mitigate the information security risk, which are deterrent control, preventive control, detective control, compensating control, corrective control, recovery control, and directive control. But don't worry, we will try to make it simple to understand. What is deterrent control? Deterrent control is like giving a warning to someone having malicious intent. These controls helps organizations to discourage an attacker from attacking their information or information systems. In other words, deterrent control is a countermeasure used to make an attacker or intruder to think twice about his malicious intent but at the same time, if the intruder attempts to attack the information or information systems, he will not be prevented. The examples of deterrent or warning controls are fences, security guards, dogs, lights, video surveillance and alarms. Now take an example here of a thief who tries to enter a house where there is a poster with beware of dogs and you are under CCTV monitoring, which means the house owner is warning the intruder that 
If you try to break the wall or the gate, you will be attacked by the dog and also you will get caught by the CCTV cameras. But we don't know whether the dog really exists or CCTV camera is functioning. So in this scenario, it is still not stopping the thief from his malicious intent because if he dares, he can get into the house and give an attempt. But even if these controls are placed, it doesn't stop him from breaking the gate or wall. Preventive controls. Preventive controls are used to prevent any malicious activity by the intruder trying to break the system. In this scenario, an attempt made by the intruder gets blocked or stopped from doing harm to the information and information systems. When you decide to use a preventive countermeasure, you want to prevent a malicious action from occurring by blocking or stopping someone or something from doing or causing so. Examples of such types of controls are firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, security guards, biometric access control, encryption, video surveillance, fences, strong authentication, locks, man traps, and antivirus softwares. An example could be you are trying to attempt an access to the application and in order to get the access to, access to the application, you need to have your username and password. Along with that, you need to have your RSA token, which means once you are authenticated by your user ID and password, there is another level of security is to enter your RSA token ID, which will verify that you are authorized user and you are authorized to get access to the system, else it will reject or prevent your access. Detective controls. Detective controls are used to monitor or detect the intruder's malicious activities. But remember, the detective controls don't stop the intruder's attempt to break the system. It only identifies and reports them to the administrator or system owner. Examples of detective controls are intrusion detection systems, alarms, lights, motion detectors, security guards, video surveillance, locks and audit rails, enforcing staff vacations. And an example of these detective controls is log management system where all the logs related to the user, applications and systems are stored to an investigation in case of any system or application breach. Compensating control. Compensating control provides an alternate solution to a countermeasure that is either impossible or too expensive to implement. As you may notice, one control may serve in one, two or more functional types. For example, the security guards are considered to be preventive, detective, and deterrent control as well. Now, take an example of implementing an electronic badge access control. It could be very expensive for small organizations. So, management may decide to keep a security guard to let him verify or do a security check on visitors or employees. So, the compensating control for electronic badge access systems is now security guard. Corrective control. Corrective control is used to get the system back to normalcy after an incident or disaster. In other words, it solves the immediate problem. Example of corrective controls are restoring operating system or data from a recent backup, updating an outdated antivirus, installing a fix. In case of a disaster, the first priority for the business is to start its critical operations. And to start the operations, they need the data. As a corrective control, your IT administrator keeps the data back, backup safe and use the backup media to restore the data. And this is an example of the corrective control. Recovery control. Recovery control aims to complement the work of corrective actions. They also try to get the system back to its normal condition before the attack occurred. Recovery control includes disaster recovery site, system and data backups, and high availability. Directive control. Directive control is deployed to direct, confine, or control the actions of subjects to force or encourage compliance with security policies. Examples of directive controls include security policy requirements or criteria, posted notification, skip routes exit signs, monitoring, supervision, and procedures. An example is your organization's information security policy, which directs an employee to abide with the existing policy. Also, these policies are driven by the management from top to bottom. Another example is 
As per the new directive from the European Union, all the organizations dealing with European citizens' data should comply with GDPR requirements. So, these two examples are indicative of directive control. Thank you for your participation in this journey with me and if you like my videos, please like, share, subscribe and comment. Also let me know on which topic you would like to see in the next video. Till then, bye, stay home and stay safe.